verbal situation. But in doing that, I have become much happier. I've become much nicer because it's made me think of all of my interactions, like the way I interact with people. All of them are for person to person. All right, of right, them. right. All of them are face to face. Yeah. Even yeah. though this podcast is reaching fucking millions of people. All of my interactions with people are face to face. And it's yeah. a much healthier way to get Yeah, well, that. all the interactions I have with people face to face, I might as well say all because I've had, like, I don't know how many interactions with strangers in the last five years, but it would be at least. It's at least. 75,000, like, at least. It might be way more than that, but it's definitely at least that. There's been three that weren't positive. And weirdly enough, there's there's only been three that weren't extremely positive. They're so positive that it's almost unbearable. Because one of the things that's very strange now, I don't know, I don't know what happens to you when you're out on the street. What happens? Come with me. Tell me what Go happens. tonight. We will. Fucking wild. Yeah, so tell, tell me what happens I to you. I get mobbed. It's weird. Okay, and, and how often have you had a negative interaction? Very, 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 very rare. Most people are friendly. Even most people, if they didn't like me before for whatever reason, they say hi, I say hi to them. Yeah. And we're usually like, oh, he's just a person. Just a person. And I'm a nice person. I'm very nice. I try to, I go out of my way to be nice. Yeah. It's something I practice. Yeah. Like, I practice martial arts. I practice being nice. Yeah. Because I yeah. think it's valuable. It's not yeah. just valuable to me. I think it's valuable to the people I encounter. Oh, oh, absolutely. I think I have a responsibility to the way people react to me. Yeah. And, and if I, if so I, one of the if I misstep, it bothers me a lot. Well, the other thing about being in a position like the one you occupy is because people know you in a way that you don't know them. When they approach you. Yeah. And the reason they approach you is because you're an idol of sorts. Because otherwise they wouldn't hold you in esteem. And that is even the case if they're negatively attracted to you in some sense, right? And so the problem with those interactions is that if you make a mistake, that person will never forget it for the rest of their life and they will tell everyone about it. Well, more so importantly, like the way they feel could have been avoided. Yes, absolutely. You absolutely. could have done a better job in interacting with yeah. them. And then, you know, sometimes people come up to you and, look, one of the things that I've done when I've met famous people that I really admire is I've been awkward and clunky. Yeah, yeah. And if, you Very like and and if you're case. awkward and clunky, especially when I was younger, yeah. and you catch someone who's tired, maybe someone yeah. who's j jet lagged or hungover, yeah. you can have a bad interaction. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're like, ah, that guy was a dick. And then it's fun. Yeah. It's fun to say that guy was a oh, dick. Oh, yeah. It's fun. It's exciting. Yeah, well, it's also an expression of your profound sense of betrayal. Yes. You no, know, because you're kind of hoping when you go up to the person right. that they're the real thing. Yes. And then you get burned, and you're really betrayed by that. Like, it's right. a deep betrayal. Sure. You know, I, 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 I spent a lot of time in my clinical practice working with people who are socially awkward. So, I analyzed social awkwardness at the level of detail. And so, and one of the things I do when people come up to me, because they're often awkward. And they'll say things like, oh, you know, I'm fanboying or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And I always, I always shake their hands, and I always look at them, and I always ask them their name. And no matter how awkward they are, they can almost always remember their name. <laughs> <laughs> and so once they say their name and they look back at me, 95% of that awkwardness goes away. Yeah. And then, so I can put them at ease instantly, and then we can have a little, a real interaction. Not long, because otherwise I would only be doing that. And, and that all, that always goes wonderfully. And it's amazing. But I think it was hard on me. It's hard on me in a way, because a lot of the people who come up to me are emotional. Mm. And so, it's weird. My life is so weird because wherever I go, it's like being surrounded by old friends because I'll go down the street and everybody says hi, you know, or they come up to me in this friendly way and open and you know, like there's yeah. no defenses. Right. They come up to me like they're people I know, which That's is very weird. Way. Yeah, and sure yeah, it is. Same man. exact thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you really have to handle that carefully because they have made themselves vulnerable in that moment and, and you don't want to. You've had an impact on their life. Yes. I'm sure your work has shaped oh, a, lot, a lot of the people shit. that are very happy to see you. 
you've had a personal <laughs> impact on <laughs> Are you life. ready? Yeah, and, and it's been a positive one. Yes. And so wouldn't I be the uh, ultimate bloody fool to do anything to put any sort of twist in that at all? Because right. wouldn't that be a catastrophe? But so human interactions are messy. Sometimes things go wrong. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, my wife has got good at this, and I have a good team around me, and they help me manage this. And, and so, because we try really hard to make sure that all these interactions go as well as they possibly can. Yeah. And that's... And that's, it is really wonderful because it's really something to be received as a friend by strangers everywhere. And it's you think nice. this is back to this idea of success. You talk about these successful, power mad, psychopath types. That isn't what happened when they walk down the streets. Like people are plotting murder or they always are lying to them. Like everywhere they right. go, it's literally hell. Saddam Hussein. Is you small. bet, you bet. <laughs> or Stalin who got hyper paranoid. Everyone's a liar. Everyone's yeah. a liar. Well, yeah, everyone lies to you. Everyone. Right. You have no friends. They are terrified of you. Not a single word every anyone has ever said to you for the last 40 years was honest. He's got a oh, behind us, behind us. Yeah, and he created it. So how's that for hell? What was it like for you? Because you have a very weird experience in life. You were, uh, it's very weird. There's not a lot of people like you. Where you were a university professor, and then all of a sudden you were famous. And yeah. you were famous in your late 40s. And uh, really famous. Like, not just famous, but famous as like a, a worldwide, you know, there, dep depending on who you ask, either you're a voice of reason and rationality and, and um, you know, a, a personal responsibility, or you're a voice of intolerance and bigotry and anger and hateful. Sexual oppression. Uh, what did Michael prejudice. Eric Dyson call you? A mean, mean angry and white mean, man. Mean, yeah, and and a mean, angry white man. Yeah, yeah. You're not mean at all. Yeah, yeah. That's what's dumb about that statement. You're not mean at all. It's I am white. Actually, that's a lie too. <laughs> I'm kind of tan, and he was actually not black. Tan, he was sort of brown. I? I'm, I'm darker than you. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But neither of us are white. Well, I'm Italian. And mostly. he was brown, not black. Well, isn't that weird? Yeah, and it's really the, the weird. The black and white thing is so strange yeah, because like the shades are so... Tan and brown. There's such a spectrum of shades of people. Unless you're talking to someone who is, like, 100% African from the darkest place where they're not wearing any clothes all day, and they've developed all that melanin to protect themselves from the sun. You know, it, even the term black is weird. It's a, it's a, and when you use it for people that are literally my color, it becomes very strange. Oh, yeah, what yeah. the you know. hell is that? Mm. This is true. It's so you were asking me what it was like. What is it like to be you? Like, what is it like to? And then I know you know you've gone through a lot of shit. And this latest thing with uh, getting off of the benzodiazepine, that to me was uh, a real shocker, because uh, first of all I had no idea that you were taking it, and then to find out that it's that difficult to get off of, and then to hear from other people that have tried to get off of it how difficult it is, and then to realize how many people around me have an issue with that stuff. Xanax is a motherfucker. It, and I didn't know what a motherfucker it was until I talked to a friend who is a counselor at a drug rehab center. We were saying that that is one of the ways that people get locked back into drinking and doing drugs is a psychiatrist will prescribe Xanax. And sober people who get on Xanax all of a sudden start drinking. He said it's super common. He said, that it's one of the most difficult drugs to get off of. He said, and this is something that uh, Dr. Carl Hart, who's a, I love him to death, he's brilliant. He, he speaks so openly and honestly about drugs and you know, he's guy's a professor at Columbia. He said that there's two drugs that will kill you when you get off of them. He goes, it's alcohol and benzodiazepine. Those are the two that if you just quit, you'll fucking die. And or you wish you could. Meanwhile, they're handing those things out like Tic Tacs. Yeah. Well, they were regarded as a safe substitute for barbiturates. And you could easily overdose on barbiturates, especially with alcohol. Well, when did they know? When did they know? When was it in the literature, the difficulty of uh, detoxing yourself? Very recently. Really? Yeah. And when did they start being handed out? 20 years ago. Fuck. More. So what happened? People just stayed on them? Often. My, I have one good friend that takes it every day. 
and takes it oftentimes with alcohol, which I know you're absolutely not supposed to do. There's not a damn thing I can do about it. I, this is a friend that I love to death, and I just go, I put my hands up, and I go, there's nothing I can do. And he's been on it for more than 10 years. Yeah, well, I started taking them because I was ill. Yes. Yeah. You know, and it, they helped because I Ill couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep way? at all. I don't know. I don't know. What, I still really don't know what happened. You couldn't sleep, and so an anti-anxiety medication. Do you think that, and this is the one one of the things I want to talk to you about, why I brought up the fame thing. How much of the pressure of being attacked by all these different people and having these um, people write these uh, horrible articles about you, and I know you read that stuff, which is different from me. I don't read stuff about it, and I think that's helped me tremendously. And that, like, my gauge of how I deal with people is... Like Tucker said, Carlson doesn't read things die. about him either. You can tell. You can tell by the way he communicates. He seems free. You know, there's a burden that people carry around when they read things about themselves. Like, uh, Eric Weinstein has that burden sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, when people read... Yeah, people well, part of the reason... So did I read things about me? Well, yeah, but... That wasn't what was stressful exactly, although well, it but was. The, there's, but, but it's, well, it's what a was multitude stressful, of when I first got, I've had a history of depression and that runs in my family and that probably stems back for me right to the time when I was a kid. And, and I think when I really got sick in 2016, it was partly a manifestation of that. But at the time, my job was threatened, like actually. Right. Yeah. And my clinical practice was threatened. And the Canadian Revenue Agency was after me all at the same time. And they were after me because of a mistake they had made, which they admitted three months later. And the college was after me because of a vindictive client who came after me with packed lies because they were so... And basically, I emerged from that unscathed, but that was by no means obvious that that was going to be the case. I was accused of sexual misconduct. And the evidence? When I was dealing with this client, I turned my wedding ring around. You'd spin it? Well, I play with it. Right. And that well, was sexual her, misconduct? Yeah, well, to her, it was a signal of some dark underlying desire that I wasn't, that was polluting our therapeutic relationship. I've been doing that with you the whole time. Yeah. I have this uh, silicone wedding ring. Yeah, well, I'm going to report, I'd report you if you had. you're in there. I, I, yeah, exactly. I do that all the time. Yes, well, there Is you go. Bad? It's It's really bad. And if there was a college that governed the behavior reprobates like you, I would definitely report. No, don't I do, do that. That's do terrible. I stretch it out. No, that's uh, <laughs> Freudian to the extreme. Although I don't know what turning it means. Well, how could this stretching a silicone wet it Well, While you're putting your finger in it. What kind of vagina yeah, well, are you dealing rubber, with? Rubber is, you know, that's good. Anyway, we don't have to anyway, go there. So the, yeah. that was all you had done was turn, play with your wedding ring. Yeah. Yeah, and that. And I was really, I really helped her a lot. Like, well, so unfortunately, so when you're dealing with people that are extremely troubled, uh, oftentimes they look for external reasons why they're troubled, and they find oppressors. Well, she was also them. angry with me because when all this blew up around me, it interfered with my clinical practice, and she had come to rely on our weekly meetings. Oh, yeah. So she trouble. was, she was angry and about being abandoned, and uh, it was really sad because I didn't want to abandon my clients, but. I had to stop my clinical practice, which was also very upsetting to me, because mm. I had like 20 clients, and I right. knew these people, man. Like they right. were, I knew these people. Yeah. You know, I'd fold them through thick and thin, and then all of a sudden, so many things piled up around me that I found when I was in a clinical session that I was distracted. So well, you can't be distracted in a clinical session. Right. And so, anyways, what emerged from that, and it was in the middle of the winter, and I have seasonal affective disorder, I couldn't sleep at all for quite a long time and I went to my doctor and I said I can't sleep and he gave me a sleeping medication and, and, and an anti-anxiety drug and I took the, a little bit of the anti-anxiety drug and I could sleep and my life was pretty stressful and I thought okay I'm much better I'm just gonna leave this be this is working I'm not gonna muck with it because I could barely go back to work and what was it a low dose yeah yeah I couldn't even feel Ozanics? it Really? Yeah, so it was it a just low dose. So it alleviated the anxiety, but it didn't affect your cognitive performance, or it didn't affect the well, way. Well, it didn't affect it as much as how sick I was. Like <laughs> that really affected. So me. sick meaning oh, depressed. I, no, you no, mean, no, no, you say no, you're sick. Was, no, no. I uh, when it hit, um, I if I stood up, 
my blood pressure was really low. If I stood up, I'd faint. I was fainting when, five or when, six times a day. When are we talking about? 2016. Okay, so this was when all the pressure from all these different sources was coming at you. Yeah. And that was making you sick. So it was changed no, physically. Yeah, that was part of it. I think I think it, what it did was it, it stressed me enough so that I was susceptible, more susceptible to whatever was wrong with me in the first place. So there was I've something. I had a lot of immunological problems. But so this was also when you got on this diet, which has been very beneficial, right? When did you get on the diet? To be. Yeah, it was around the same time. 2016, 17, and that seemed to be you know, the cure to a lot of your woes was to eliminate processed foods and eliminate sugar and bread and pasta and all those different things. Which yeah, I hate to talk about it because I don't, I, don't, I don't really recommend this to people, you know, because I'm not a dietitian and I'm not really that interested in it in a sense, you know. Yeah, but Partly because okay. I'm not it's an authority. But it's your personal experience. Yeah, yeah, well... So uh, your personal experience in just yeah. this all Well, my wife has diet. a lot of immune problems, and, and some of them are quite serious, and I have a number of immune problems, and some of them are quite serious, and our daughter got both of them and was really affected by it. And, like, she was... She told her mom... Just Michaela. She told her mom... When she was starting to come out a little bit, she said... Michaela was only staying awake six hours a day in, in her late teenage years. And the only reason she could stay awake was because she was taking Ritalin, because otherwise she would have just slept, like, all, literally all the time. And, and uh, she said, you know, Mom, I was I dying. I got to test this out on this guy. So, let's see, where's the And, and flow. Not that much damage. It's not a pleasant way to die. Not, like, it was and much damage as I thought. Yeah, she, it was terrible. I mean, oh, wow, terrible. it actually is, like, a decent amount of damage, right? right? Yeah, and then like re A decent amount of damage. damage. Three years ago. Well, you saw a and this is no all. This is all oh, because she can't be on general well, anesthetic. Well, she was didn't it want it to de. Yes, oh. spinal. But they still had to do all the hammer and so on while she was. I there. had my knee done that one. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how to access the hearing aid? Because I figured I really didn't have one knee surgery. I should see it. I don't know. That's not true. I had three. Oh but yeah. I thought it was true at the time. I thought I was only going to have one uh -huh. knee reconstruction. Yeah, so I started getting better in uh, so do you know how to access I'm not sure why. So, but, but uh, uh, sorry, I'm listening to something. Can you speak up a bit? Diet. The all uh, diet. Do you know how to access the way? Yeah. Yeah. Alone, yeah, press um, the B button on the left hand. Oh, the swords. Um, I haven't got any drop. Do you buy them? Alright here, so uh, you can get them. Uh, Alright here, so do you? Uh, Alright here, so check in like your inventory and then go to quests. It happens when people age. Yeah. And then like your inventory. Uh, and then uh, there should be like these little things called dancing sparks. Yeah. Like it's not good. Common right there. You're way more likely to have heart so, uh, trouble. So those are like the things that like uh, you are looking for. Uh, if you have ten of them, then you can get like a level five sword. And that's incurable. And how do I do that? Completely gone, meaning oh, uh, just follow me. It's pretty close. No, because they never quite. Okay, back, thank you very much. But there's no inflammation right mm. and no bleeding. That's all gone, and no irritation. Interesting. So that's that's interesting. I had psoriasis, and that's gone. And I had peripheral uveitis, which caused my right eye to be full of bleeding. Okay, so it's over here. There's inflammation right. on the bottom, producing like. Is that amica? Tissue uh, production, and that would fill the, the aqueous liquid in my eye and I can see all these floaters all the time and that's pretty much gone completely and um, I lost 50 pounds in seven months and wow. now I weigh exactly what I, I weighed when I, I was I ran out of stamina and wow. so it's basically just like right, right up there is it, it do I talk to the girl or whatever um, I'm no, no, it's up here. What else? Okay. My, my, the sides of my legs were quite numb right. for like oh, two decades. Uh, sides nice of your legs hard. were yeah, numb. Yeah. A little parkour? Were having back here, so it's right here. No. <laughs> no back no, pain. No. Not at no. all? No, no, no back pain. Then um, press like that level five. So now they're, they were hard. You click on that. Hard and rigid. Then click on sword. Oh, and, uh, you see click that on like the sword right here, the galleon steel. It does 174 damage. It has three primary stats. Tier one Vanguard increased so defense. And you've been tier on this diet now for five years. Five years. Or yeah. tier one and it's just mighty me. increased attack. Yes. Although there were times when I was eating some other things, but that didn't seem to work pretty well. So what other things are you trying? Low carb vegetables. Or maybe it's like the other way around. I don't really know. Primarily. Like greens, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Mushrooms. No. So you just greens. like bring like these things like over here about like twice. Some, yeah. I miss fruit a lot. I miss a lot yeah. of things, but 
say the least. Like, did like the swords so just disappear? So when you introduced fruit, that was an oh, issue. Wait. Someone just put like a like when um, I, like a jacket. I was still really like, sick uh, in August. Steel, like, and there. I was eating some more there. things. Yeah. Um. Um, oh, you're, Christ, you're, you're, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk away. I think. I'm. Maybe. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. Get some, yeah. Here. Then you just come back here. Somewhere. You click like the gallon of steel blade. Um. Again. And then you just move this over here twice. Don't let anyone else mess. Another number of other things happen. But only if like the gallon steel blade is like appearing here. I started to feel better. So the day, you're gonna press like the gallon seal blade, you're gonna click this. Took me like four or five if that hours button is green. Yeah, okay. Like, and this is, awesome. if this button this is, is green, coming off click that. Yeah. Like that. I, and then you just bring that over there like, twice. I don't know what happened, because like I said, I was sick See? when I started taking. So do you think a lot that of this certainly is take pressure? Going off and you should have like a gallon seal blade. Your check I really don't know, Joe, you know. When you get sick and you don't know what it is, you actually don't know. Unless but it seems like my mother, my mother, right? and, yeah, um, my mother and my sister. I think I got it. Yeah. Even if, even if I don't, you taught me how. So I got figured out. But thank you. Literally so sick. I could it. And we thought click the thing. We're live you like click this the green button if it is green. So we planted this too. These things um, over here about twice. My mother and, and sister were quite yeah. worried about it because they thought that the yeah. tour, the last tour, was part of what stressed me out. But I don't believe that. I really like it. And once it turns oh. like a cube, grab it and then put it on like a wristband. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't waiting for it. I got it now. I'm not interested in sitting around, relaxing. I don't even know how to do that, so, really. Even if I have so time off, if you I have don't 20 of them, relax. Then you can just, like, well, get enjoyment and stress like yeah. are often the same thing. Yeah, so okay, so now my one hand is more than the other. I know, it didn't mean too much. Yeah, but what do you do instead? What do you do instead? Like, I relax? What does that mean? I have a point in the I go out on my lake. We look at the sunset. I love it. I'm not saying it's doing anything different. Yeah. But I'm saying physiological enjoyment and stress often come hand to hand. Yeah. Because the, some of the things that you enjoy doing are challenging. And challenging things create physiological so stress. Yeah, they there. don't. They don't? No. In what fact, there's there's a whole literature on this. Imagine that you... Challenging things, phys ch challenging not things Not if they're voluntary. Don't. Not if they're voluntary. Okay, what if you like to fight? Okay, if you, like, one of the things that I noticed when I was young and I was competing, because I was always just getting sick. Yeah. Even though I loved doing it. I loved yeah. fighting. But I, I was always nervous. Yeah, but you're taking a fair bit of physical. Physical? No? No. That's okay. not what it was. It was, it was Look, stress. an excess of anything can push you beyond the limit. I'm just saying that there's a, there's a tax. There's a thing that you're doing, right? When you're interacting with thousands of thousands of people, yeah, because yeah, if you you're expressing together, controversial uh, viewpoints that are often criticized. You're reading uh, okay, articles that are written really about you. There's a stress people. that comes with doing yeah. this thing that you love that's yeah. undeniable. Uh, let's go check out like, the waterfall. Yes. Yeah. And I've had to parse that apart carefully to decide what was particularly stressful uh, that I could move. let go of and how and maintain the rest of it. Mm. And hopefully, Tammy's helped Wait, me with so that. Oh, my whole family and my like friends, everybody goes, around me has helped me with this. Yeah, that's like part of like the spell. Hopefully, I'm, I'm like more and more able to separate class. the wheat from so. the chaff. And oh, I are you the, yeah, I'm support I blade master too, or whatever. That's it. Oh, I've been writing Oh, what level did you get that skill? Five songs? Uh, really? I am level, yeah, eight, so level six. No, I yeah, do character years, voices. I, I got it. I was okay. singing. What does that mean? Yeah. By the way, well, the it? music. If you're really done sharpened. The music like, is very well, dramatic. You do this. And you know, go it. The, the music is very dramatic. Um, oh. I could give you. A, I could give you. That's a taste cool. We yeah. need a taste. Okay. Thank you. So I wrote these books. I wrote these books called an ABC of childhood tragedy, and they're. Really okay. dark poems. Okay, let's go check out 26 children? No, the definitely not. Oh. Absolutely, 100%, decidedly, thoroughly, <laughs> comprehensively, not for children. Mm. Right, well, they're very dark. Okay. And I had my illustrator for Beyond Order, no, no, who I really like. No. Yeah. Julia Why? Julia. We can do it. Who's a Eastern European, no, got a dark side, brilliant. Brilliant artist. When I was really sick in January and trying to figure out what I could do, Tammy said, you remember those poems you wrote? And they're the sort of poems you read for them for them long. You read them and you laugh and then you hate yourself for laughing. Mm. And so, and I wrote them and I was in the midst of pretty Just juke them out. experiences. Try to, I'm not sure exactly why. I'm about to die. Blow off some steam. Yeah, back up, dude. You, we can finish them. But there was more to it than that, and I don't know all of what it is. I'm kind of working at the juncture between black comedy 
and beauty. It's a weird space. And Yuli is drawing to unbelievable so beauty. So and deep. She's so good at this. And so, so I sent her these terrible poems I wrote awesome. that are comical and horrible. Uh, I and uh, yeah. I said, Tammy thought it was a good thing to Because I thought about getting an illustrator. You want to take a look at these if you're interested? And then she sent me back these stunningly beautiful illustrations. And then she produced Good job, one guys. every three days for like three months. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'm full. Post one if you want. And so, and then we thought, well, that's fun. That, that was fun and, and very worthwhile. And then, like, there are all these Depression-era children, and they're all beautiful, beautiful children. And they're all pathos. There's, they're, her drawings are full of pathos and, and, and sorrow for their suffering. So they're very deep so and dark and, show you the and beautiful, you all of that at once, with these terrible that you need black comedy Did you get that skill dropped too, or did well, you just unlock it? It'd be fun to figure out how to uh, you a market, a market this. So do you know the name? Well, why don't we write some music and so it's set up and write this? I wrote a whole screenplay, which we've also recorded three songs for, it's called The Water of Life, which is a fairy tale, and I want to make a musical out of it. And so that's quite fun, and so we've written and recorded three songs for it already. So this so is what you were doing sweet. when you were recovering from yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was great because I it really worked out nicely because when I was so ill, I had something to look forward to because I knew Yulia was going to send me a beautiful image and and I didn't know what it was going to be. And then we assembled it into a book. And then I started working with this musician, Marshall Tully, who I really like and who's a good arranger and a, like, uh, can play all sorts of instruments. And he's got a great musical sense. And so we started working on music together. So he'd write the music, so like and, uh, and uh, I wrote some of it, and, but he wrote most of it, and he played almost all of it. And we had a band involved for one part, and we'll do that some more. And so he'd write the music, and then I'd write the lyrics. And then I'd send them, and then we'd record it. I'd send the music and lyrics to Yulia, and she'd generate a bunch of images. And so then we made a bunch of videos out of it, set the music, which we'll release on YouTube in, like, fall of this year. And... and uh, you know, that was part of marketing for the book, but then it turned into its own complete enterprise, and so we're going to put out an album of all these songs. And so that's, I love that. It's so fun. So that so helped fun. you just having some sort of creative expression. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it helped Wait, a lot. How long did it take you to recover from that? Well, when I finally, two years. And, and I haven't fully recovered, but but, I, but also I was recovered? also sick. No, I have my left hand is quite numb, and was way more numb. Both my. That is awesome. I can do this as well. Yeah, like all like I can do is just uh, I can shoot a light at you that would be If you go to the fourth option, you can click that and see how many people are in your party. Yeah, if you point at me real quick, you can like... Okay, so I have this um, one skill, it's called Sunder. Downwards cadence. I don't think activates every three downward strikes. It the downward cadence is good. Strikes for 130. I don't want you get the rest. Percent. Do you guys want to kill the lizard thing if you haven't yet? Oh, wait, the lizard I've already, thing. I've killed it four times. Okay. The naga. Yeah. Are talking yeah. about like the naga? Yeah. The yeah. I've only killed uh, one of them, but uh, there's four of them, as far as I know. There's four that I know of. I've killed two of them. Wait, what's this thing? Like, there's like this I know all the locations of them. It says like 85 out of 100, like 1,262. Oh. Not like the health thing. But, like, it's like above that, right? The thing, like, above that. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's the other kind oh. of energy. No, or I have 85 out of 832. Or every time I press the jump button, it keeps going up, so I don't know. I'm pretty sure you're, huh, I'm, do you have four people in your party? I have no idea. I've never met my party. 
But I know that now we have three people. At least that. Uh, we're not actually you, in the party you, yet. Oh. oh. Our names would be green above us. Uh. Yeah, your name's green and your name's green. Yeah, both of your names oh, are green. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. We're good. Okay. Me, it's not. Yeah. I have official now we have three people in the party at least, and someone invited me, so uh, yeah, I think we have four. You got. We got two wait, people that this? just started the game and then a beta tester. Oh, wait, so, that's yeah, if you guys need to know thing. anything else. Alright, here's that. Has a cooldown of 15 seconds. Cool. Wait. So, does it also cause, like, that little like, thing on, like, the ground? Like, the... Yeah, that's me. Yeah, let me try that. Uh, if you throw it, it'll put a pentagram, I think. That's what you got, yeah. Oh, yeah that does that. damage to any nearby... Oh, I didn't even know I could do that. So that's what you're doing. Yeah. So that's what you're doing, but you're doing, like, a reverse thing. Instead of damaging enemies, you're healing your allies. I've spent the whole game not healing myself with that. I didn't know you could throw it. Ghost step. Wait, are you a healer as well? Yeah, that's so I sick. You can throw it straight up. You don't even have to. I could throw it this high and it'll still work. Wait for it to fall back down. Sunders but you can just lick it onto the ground. Just a quick. Yeah, that's super cool. Hmm. What? 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 Minor upgrades, primal, what? increase the power of this ability. How do I even upgrade that? One point to unlock? Might do it. Do you have to pick up some unlocks? Because I've been getting things that seem like skill points. Okay, so like from monsters. Are they, like, are they showing what that ability is? Yeah, but it's like a cube off the ground. Yes, yeah, so that you can use to put into your ability, which will make it stronger. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So go step. So I just got an uncommon regular. Right, so what do you think is better, a ghost step um, common plus two, or like a level two um, common ghost step, or a level one uncommon regular? Personally, I'm going with like the uncommon regular. So, do you guys want a little bit of Dragon a challenge, Slayer. or...? Sure. Right here, so the only one sure. that, like, I have, like, minor upgrades what on is, it? is the, uh... Yeah, I'll bring you there. Is the um, Sunder. It's a different area. Not many people go there because they don't know about it. Okay. Oh, I got dropped one of those you swords, know those eh? Floating, oh, hey, you well, see that floating cool. island up here? Yeah. I've been on one of those. Oh, yeah? Wait, can you actually get up there? Well, I think uh, you have to no. get on the updrifts. It's a glitch. It's a glitch that oh, used to be in the game where you can just fling yourself up. <laughs> so you know how you can use sensitive uh, sliding? Yeah. You have to use that for that, that old glitch, but they patched it. You would do that, and as soon as you jump up, you'd swing down. You'd swing down and flick your hands up. You'd go flying. Oh, wait, really? that's really cool. Wait, how are you? If, if you throw two, does it double the healing? No. No? Not that I know of. Right here, so... Does it only work, like, sometimes, like, pointing down? Because that's kind of cool. You throw it. Oh, yes, actually it does. It quick... It makes it quicker on healing. Oh, oh yeah, I see. Yours, you throw... You, you have to Wait, throw So what it. does entropy do? Like, what does that mean? Like, does it, like, oh, heal you? Uh -huh. I'm damaging like the enemy? When you're damaging the enemy, it will do you, yes. Got it. Anybody gets that ability. I love the climbing in this game too. Yeah. It's fun. Have you climbed up there before? Uh, I was thinking it's about it. Hell but fun as shit. <laughs> you wanna do it? Yeah, if you want to. Or are you gonna show us the other it's area? A workout, but Oh, he's over here. We're climbing up here. This is a rock climbing simulator. <laughs> God damn it! It's not. You're fast, dude. Oh no. Well, I ran out of stamina. <laughs> right. I had to eat some random flowers that I found on, like, the ground. 
planted for some random reason. Alright. I'm not able yeah, to get up here. Jump right, off here. This. Wait, I actually am. You have to jump out of stick part. I'm out of stamina right. already. We're good. Um, <laughs> okay, I gotta eat something. Finally. Yeah, I only. Yeah, the only ones that like I'm really like doing currently are that one over there and that one over there. Yeah. All right. Well, we need to go up this. So okay. where are we gonna? Oh wait. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really wish that like you could use like your swords for like rock climbing, basically. That would be awesome. Oh, like yeah, stabbing it into it. Idea. Yeah. You can jump up this, by the way. You don't need to climb it. Yeah, but I run out of stamina easily. I have my upgraded stamina, so... I'm good. But you can upgrade your stamina? Yeah, yeah that's what the, that. I, the teardrops are. Oh. Whoa, Wait, what, what the fuck? What is happening? What just happened? Hello? Did you happen to see a tear down there? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, there's gotta be a tear down here, you would think. Hopefully. I'm kinda blind. Beautiful whistler. Oh, event starting. Oh, nice. Thank <laughs> you. 
There's a lizard down here too. There's a big lizard boy right here. Yeah, there's a couple of them. Well, yeah, let, me, let, me, let me slow him down first. Tears. Well, let's take this one on the right first. If you guys need a heal, just call it out. I'll heal you. All right, I'm a healer too. Got some goodies. There's another one that says over here. Somewhere above me, I guess. It's probably on the outside. Oh, what's that? Leg wrappings. Okay. Let's see. That's a big boss. That's a big boss. Yeah, I was wondering why it wasn't going down.
That's it? Oh. I got nothing. Yeah. What's in here? Yeah. Looks like it wants you to break That's... that. I don't know. Huh. That's weird. I can't I can't see anything in there, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that was it. Oh. Can we get out up there? I'm climbing it, boys. Uh, yeah. Well, see what's out there? Anything? Uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to get. No. That's rough. Okay. Yeah, we'll go this way. Take the long road. Oh, we didn't go the other direction, though. Yeah, right here. Do you hear a tear? Do you see right there's one right here? Yeah. Okay, I'm a, I must have got that one. Okay. Yeah. Darn it. I just didn't remember.
chest straight ahead. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not sure which way to go, so there's three ways we can go here. But there's a chest to the right, I think. Or maybe it's straight over here. I don't know. It's just maybe in this room. Somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's above us. Yeah. I think we were here already. Uh, yeah, I was about to say. Because this is the original room. Yeah. We just went in a big circle is what it was. Because that way, so back that way is going to be going out, I guess. I'm assuming, I think. I think this is the way out. Yeah. a good group for the boss. Yeah. So there's two tiers in here, guys, so don't miss the tiers. Wait, there's two tiers in there? Yeah, there's two tiers in there. Well, they're in the cave. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good luck. Tell me I'm in a low level area. I know, I'm just here for tears. Yeah, you too.
There's no showing me on the goddamn map. Except it is. The forgotten mine. The mine's over there. I could take Where? the bird if you want. Over there? There. That direction? Over here, I think. Because this girl is not yeah. telling me what the fuck I should do. So it's over there. Yeah. Greetings, over there. agent. <laughs> Keep your eyes up. Ready to work? Roger. Till next time, Agent. Let's get down to business. Get out there, Agent. Till next time, Agent. <laughs>